Hey Undertoads, it's time to go Beyond the Beyond, one of the more unimpressive titles for a video game I've ever heard. From 1996, it's Beyond the Beyond on the Sony PlayStation. One of the first JRPGs in the fashion of Dragon Quest and others like it on the PlayStation, Beyond the Beyond tells the tale of young Finn and his friends on their mostly cliché quest to save the world from a terrible disaster. In typical JRPG style, there's grinding for levels, plenty of characters, and some humor along the way, which is mostly presented in these amusing and slightly unimpressive cutscenes. There's odd dialogue, a few localization mix-ups, and some cutscenes that do feel kind of forced, but for one of the first games like this on the PlayStation, it's a very noble effort considering this game doesn't do anything wrong. You explore towns, you talk to people, and you kill baddies. There's nothing wrong there. Beyond the Beyond isn't a terribly long game, but it does hit near 11 on the random encounter annoyance meter. But the 3D battles and 2D sprites are pretty cool to look at. You fight like you expect, picking what monsters to attack, spells, etc., but there's also a little watered-down action command system like Super Mario RPG, though nowhere near as fun. There's no real strategy to this system, but when you're attacking or getting attacked, mashing the X button causes you to perform a double attack, critical hit, guard, or perform a counterattack. Again, it's mostly luck, but when you hear the chime, you know it's done right. But damn, your thumb starts to hurt after a while of doing this, and sometimes the benefit isn't exactly fantastic. There's also a little bit of a different way health is handled. Vitality points and life points determine how much health our heroes have. Once VP hits zero, just like any normal old HP, your character is disabled, but in Beyond the Beyond he becomes groggy instead of dead. When groggy, you merely lose a turn, and when you come back, your LP diminishes to replenish your vitality points. Once you've lost all your LP, though, and then lose your VP, you die. It's not a bad system, though it can get kind of annoying when you can't recover enough to fight back and win the battle. The rest of the battle system plays how it looks, very simply. But this different way of handling health does completely change the idea of how your strategy should be, when you should heal, when you should attack, and things like that, which is the game's strongest element. Everything else about Beyond the Beyond is extremely standard, but it's very safe and comfortable. There's nothing here to shake your foundations of what you expect from a video game, especially one like this, a JRPG. Which is both good and bad, of course. If you've played a JRPG before, you can pick this one up easily and probably enjoy it. But with less and less turn-based games like this coming out these days, and the fact that the random battles can be kind of annoying, I'd be hard-pressed to recommend this game to younger players, or those out there who haven't enjoyed games like Dragon Quest or Fantasy Star. But if you can go beyond the beyond, then go beyond that beyond's beyond and beyond on Beyond the Beyond on the Sony PlayStation. <laughs>